Okay, so chapter 18. Another air car sits on our street, this time in front of M's house. What's going on? I ask Xander, whose eyes widen with fear. The official with us looks interested, but not surprised. I resist the urge to grab his shirt front tight, wrinkling it in my hands. I hold back from hissing, why do you watch us? What do you want to know? Or what do you know? The door to M's house opens and three officials come out. Our official turns to Xander and me and says almost abruptly, I hope you both had an enjoyable evening. I'll file the report with matching committee first thing tomorrow. Thank you, I say automatically as he turns back to the air train stop. Although I don't know why. I don't feel grateful. Have you ever been in that situation mm -hmm. where you say thank you even though you're not really yeah. thankful? It's just kind yeah. of an automatic response. Yep. I think up here in the Midwest, we're probably more famous for saying sorry for everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The officials at M's house walk across her yard and go to the house next door. They hold a container, something society issued, and they're not smiling. In fact, if I had to say how they looked, I would say they looked sad. I don't like it. Should we go see if M's all right, I ask. And as I do, she opens her front door and looks out. She sees Xander and me and hurries across the yard to meet us. Kasha, it's all my fault. It's all my fault. M's voice shakes and tears mark her face. What's your fault, M? What happened? I glance next door to make sure the officials aren't watching us, but they've already disappeared inside. M's neighbors open the door before the officials had to knock, as though they were expected. What's this about? Xander's voice sounds harsh, and I send him a look, trying to tell him to be patient. M's face grows even paler as she grabs her, my arm. Her voice is hushed. The officials are collecting the artifacts. What? M's lips tremble. They said that I had been seen with an artifact at the match banquet, and they'd come to collect it. I told them it wasn't mine. I'd borrowed it from you and given it back. She swallows, and I remember the night of the green tablet. I put my arm around her and glance at Xander. M keeps speaking, her voice shaky. I shouldn't have told them, but I was so scared. Now they're going to take it from you. They're going house to house. House to house. They'll be at mine soon. I want to comfort M, but I have to try to save my artifact, futile as the effort might be. I have to go home. I give M a hug. M, it's not your fault. Even if you hadn't told them, they knew I had an artifact. It's registered. And I took it to my banquet. Then I remember something, and fear washes over me. Kai's artifact. I still have it tucked away in my closet. The officials might know about my artifact, but they don't know about Kai's. It could get us both in trouble. How can I hide it? I have to go home, I say out loud this time. I pull my arm away from M's shoulders and turn toward my house. How long do I have before the officials get there? Five minutes? Ten? M starts crying harder, but I don't have time to reassure her again. I walk as quickly as I can without drawing attention. A few steps later, and Xander is next to me, linking his arm in mine as if we have been on a normal outing and are on our way home. Kasha, he says. I don't look at him. I can't stop thinking about all that could be lost in a few short moments. Kai is already an aberration. If they find out that he has an artifact, will he become an anomaly? I could cover up for him. I could say that it's mine, and I found it when we hiked in the woods. Would they believe me? Kasha, Xander says again. I can hide it for you. Say you've lost it. Make your story convincing. I can't let you do that for me. You can. I'll wait for you outside while you grab the compact. It's small enough to fit in your hand, right? I nod. When you come back out, act like you're crazy about me, like you hate saying goodbye. Throw your arms around me, drop it down my shirt. I'll take care of it after that. I've never seen this side of Xander before, I think. And then I instantly realize that I have. When he plays the games, he's like this, cool and calm and full of strategy and daring. And in the games, at least, his risks almost always pay off. Xander, this isn't a game. I know that. His face looks grim. I'll be careful. Are you sure? I shouldn't let him do this. It's weak to consider it. But still, he can take my compact for me. He would save it for me. He would risk this for me. I'm sure. Once I close the front door behind me, I run down the hall to my room as fast as I can. 
No one from my family sees me, for which I'm grateful. With shaking hands, I tear open my closet door and push the sets of plain clothes along the rack until I find the pair where I've hidden Kai's artifact inside the pocket. I open the brown paper envelope and tip it so that the arrow in its case slides out. I shove the envelope into, into my pocket. I grab the compact from the shelf and look at the two items in my hands, golden and beautiful. In spite of myself, I'm tempted to give Xander my compact instead of Kai's spinning arrow, but I put the compact onto my bed and close my hand over Kai's artifact. Saving my compact would be selfish. It would only save a thing. But saving Kai's artifact saves both of us from questioning and from him becoming an anomaly. And how can I let them take the last piece of his old life? This is safer for Xander, too. They don't know Kai's artifact exists, so hopefully they won't miss it. My compact will be accounted for and taken away, as expected, so they won't look for it or wonder if I've given it to someone else. Question? Oh, were they see her with the... Yeah, were they see with the artifact? They haven't seen, well, she's going to hide it in Xander's shirt. Yeah, but they were, like, looking for it because they saw him with his... They saw her with her compact. Oh! Yep. So they saw her with her compact, and they saw M with Cash's compact. All right. So they've only seen the compact. They haven't seen the compass. Okay. The spinning arrow. Yes, the spinning arrow. I run back down the hall and open the front door. Xander, wait! I call out to him, trying to make my voice light. Aren't you going to kiss me goodnight? Xander turns, his face open and natural. I don't think anyone else could see the glint of cunning in his eyes, but I know him so well. I skip down the steps and he holds out his arms to me. We embrace, his hands at the small of my back and my arms around his neck. I place my hand just under the collar of his plain clothes and open my fingers. The artifact slides down his back and my palm lies flat against his warm skin, we look at each other straight in the eyes, and for a moment, for a moment, and then I lean close to his ear. Don't open it, I whisper to Xander. Don't keep it in your house. Bury it or hide it somewhere. It's not what you think. Xander nods. Thank you, I say, and then I kiss him right on the lips, and I mean that kiss. Even though I know I'm falling for Kai, it's impossible not to love Xander for everything he is and everything he does. Kasha! Bram calls from the steps. Bram, he's going to lose something today, too. What's his artifact? The watch, the watch his grandfather's watch, yep. I think of grandfather's watch and anger rises in me. Do they have to take everything? Xander breaks away from our embrace. He has to hurry to hide the artifact before they get to his house. Goodbye, he says with a smile. Goodbye, I call back. Kasha! Bram calls again, fear in his voice. I glance back down the street, but I don't see any officials yet. They must still be in one of the houses between mine and M's. Hi, Bram, I say, attempting to sound casual. It's better for us all if he doesn't suspect what Xander and I have done. Where's... They're taking the artifacts, Bram says, voice shaking. They called Papa in to help with the collection. Of course, I should have realized... They need someone like him to determine if the artifacts are real or false. Another fear strikes me. Was he supposed to take our artifacts? Did he pretend mine was lost? Did he lie for Bram or me? How many stupid mistakes is he willing to make for those he loves? Oh no, I say, trying to act as though all of this is new to me. Hopefully Bram won't find out that M told me earlier. Did he take ours with him? No, Bram says. They won't let anyone collect from their own families. Did he know this was going to happen? No. When the call came over the port, he was shocked, but he had to report right away. He told me to listen to the officials and not to worry. I want to put my arm around Bram and comfort him because he is about to lose something, something important. So I do. I hold on to my brother, and for the first time in years, he hugs me back, tight, the way he did when he was a little boy and I was the big sister he admired more than anyone else in the world. I wish I could have saved his watch, but it was the wrong color, silver instead of gold, and the officials know about it. There was nothing I could do, I tell myself, trying to believe it. We hold on for a few seconds and then I pull away and look Bram in the eyes. Go get it, I say to him. Go look at it for the last few minutes you have and remember it. Remember it.
Bram doesn't pretend to hide the tears in his eyes now. Bram, I say and hug him again. Bram, something bad could have happened to the watch even without this. You could have lost it. You could have broken it. But this way, you can look at it one last time. It's never really lost to you as long as you remember it. Can't I try to hide it? Bram asks. He blinks and a tear escapes. He brushes it away angrily. Will you help me? No, Bram, I say gently. I wish we could, but it's too dangerous. What I risk has a limit, and I won't risk Bram. When the officials arrive at our house and come in the door, they find Bram and me sitting on the divan side by side. Bram holds silver, I hold gold. We both look up. But then Bram's gaze flickers back to the polished silver surface in his hands, and I glance down at the gold one in mine. My face looks back at me, distorted by the curve of the compact surface, the way it was at the match banquet. Then, the question I asked myself was, do I look pretty? Now the question I ask is, do I look strong? As I look at my eyes and the set of my jaw, it seems to me that the answer is yes. A short, balding official speaks first. The government has decided that artifacts promote inequality among members of society, he says. We request that everyone turn in their artifacts for catalog and display at the museum in each city. Our records indicate that there are two legal artifacts in this residence, a tall official adds. Does he stress the word legal, or is it my imagination? One silver watch, one gold compact. I don't say anything, and neither does Bram. Are these the artifacts? The bald official asks, looking at the items we hold. He seems weary. This must be a terrible job. I imagine my father taking artifacts from people, old people like grandfather, children like Bram, and I feel sick. I nod. Do you want them now? You may retain them for a few more minutes. We are required to do a quick search of the house. Bram and I both sit quietly while they go through our house. It doesn't take long. Nothing valuable here, one of them says quietly to the other in the hallway. My heart is on fire, and I have to keep my mouth shut tight so that I don't try to burn these officials with the flames. That's what you think, I say to myself. You think there's nothing here because we're not putting up a fight, but there are words in our heads that no one else knows. And my grandfather died on his terms, not yours. We have things of value, but you can never find them because you don't know how to look. How would it make you feel if someone went and walked through your house and then said nothing of value here? Really uncomfortable. Yeah, Offended. Really. If you think about the things in your house that you value most, <laughs> is it something that's necessarily monetarily valuable? I'd probably say some mean things back to them. Mm -hmm. I'd be so, so when you think about value in your house, yeah, a lot of times you think, exactly, yeah. it might not look like much or it might not look valuable, but to you, it means something. Maybe it's something that's been passed down from grandparents or that's been in a family for a long time. Maybe it's, you know, a drawing that one of your parents made or that you may, there's things that, that hold value. They just might not get a lot of money from that value. It's a different type of value, right? They walk back into the room, and I stand up. Bram does, too. The officials wave detection instruments around us to make sure we haven't concealed anything on our persons. Of course, they find nothing. The female official comes forward, and I see a pale band of skin on her finger where a ring must have been. She lost something today, too. I hold out the compact, thinking about how my artifact has traveled from a time before the society, from one family member to another, to me, and now I have to let it go. The official takes my compact. She takes the watch from Bram. You can come see them at the museum anytime you like. It's not the same, he says. And then he straightens his shoulders, and oh, I see grandfather, I do. My heart swells with the thought that perhaps he isn't completely gone after all. You can take it, Bram says, but it will always be mine. <laughs>